is the increase in artificial intelligence, the lunging forward of the technology, uh, how will this play into end times? I've heard some suggest, I don't believe it, I don't agree with it, but I've had, heard some suggest that maybe the Antichrist will be artificial intelligence. That's what the Antichrist system will be. I don't believe that's the case, although I do think artificial intelligence will be involved in the last days. What say you, Dr. Andy Woods? Well, I clearly see artificial intelligence involved in the last days in passages like Revelation 13, verse 15, which talks about um, a statue that the Antichrist will set up in the Jewish temple midway through the tribulation period, and it will, be, it will turn from being um, an inanimate object to animate. It has the ability to speak and compel worship. So if you're looking to find artificial intelligence in the last days, that's where I would go. But having said that, the Bible is crystal clear, and I think the uh, the Bible supports this. Just um, I was looking up some sources just before I came on. The early church fathers, going back to Irenaeus, support this. You know, John discipled Polycarp, who discipled Irenaeus. Uh, so the Bible and the early church fathers support the idea that the Antichrist is actually going to be a human being. And biblical support for that is Revelation 13, verse 18, the famous or infamous Mark of the Beast passage. And it speaks there about the number of a man. And the Greek word there is anthropos, meaning man. The Antichrist is also called the lawless one, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. And he's called the son of perdition in that same passage. And the only other person called the son of perdition in the whole Bible is Judas. Well, Judas, the prefigurement of the Antichrist, was a man. In fact, all the prefigurements of the Antichrist, whether it's Titus of Rome Daniel 9.26, Antiochus Epiphanes, Daniel 11.31, and even going back to Nimrod, Genesis chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. These are all commonly held precursors of the Antichrist. All of them were human beings. And even beyond that, when you look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 3, John, who wrote Revelation, by the way, talks about a spirit of the Antichrist in the world, and he says, you know that the, definite article, Antichrist, singular, is coming. And if all of that weren't proof enough, in Revelation chapter 19, verse 20, the Antichrist, there he's called the beast, is thrown into the lake of fire. And he's still in the lake of fire uh, a thousand years later, Revelation chapter 20, verse 10 seems to indicate that. So obviously he's not a machine. He would have just dissolved into the lake of fire. He's a human being. You know, God has set eternity into the hearts of men. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. So I, I think when you look at the totality of the biblical data and you take a look at the what the early church fathers believed, clearly the Antichrist that's coming is a human being. Not, not, that's not to say that he can't or won't use artificial intelligence as he seems to do in Revelation 13, verse 15. But I think for people to say that the Antichrist is going to be a computer or a robot, you know, ultimately, I think is going beyond biblical parameters. What do you make of this headline tonight? Jerusalem synagogue killing spree leaves seven dead, three injured. Well, what I make of it is... Um, well, what does the Bible predict in the last days? Uh, Zechariah 12, verse 3, Zechariah 14, verse 2, it, it says all the nations will come against Jerusalem. And I think it was Charles Feinberg, one of my favorite commentators in his um, commentary on the book of Zechariah, says in the last days, the world, all the nations are going to be smitten or bitten with the, the bug or the disease of anti-Semitism. And so news reports like this, as sad as they are, you know, don't surprise me, but they're just a sign of the times. You know, what do you say as a pastor, as we conclude tonight, Dr. Woods, what do you say to the people tonight who say, why does God allow evil like this in the world? Well, I would say that 
one of the things that I steer away from is the doctrine of omni-causality, which is the idea, the misguided idea that God is not only omnipotent, but he causes everything. I don't think the Bible teaches that. You believe God's I, omnipotent, but you don't believe he causes evil. Correct. Okay. He's all-powerful, but the explanation for evil is going back to Eden, going back to the Luciferian rebellion, is God's creatures use their free will, which God initially gave them, to rebel against the Creator. And that's why we're living in the world that we're living in now. It's in a state of decay. It's in a state of bondage. We're living in a world that God you know, never originally intended. And yet what is amazing about God is he will actually use human suffering in our lives for his own purposes. He, he wastes nothing. You know, the famous scripture, uh, all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purposes. So he doesn't say there that um, all things are good. What he says there, Romans 8, is that he will use all things to work together for good. And so even in the midst of suffering, as, as painful as it is and as terrible as, as it is, and of course I want to go on record saying I don't you know, defend these police officers and what they did to this man at all, but as as terrible you know as this is, God can, if we allow Him, can actually use things like this in our individual lives to accomplish His greater purpose of conforming us and transforming us into the image of His Son.